never imagined us writing books when we started on our travels. But at one point, Martha said, you have so many pictures of children. We need to write a children's book. And when I looked through them, I, I hadn't realized it, but I really did have quite a few pictures of children. Because of course, in any country, the children are fascinating. And one of the reasons they're so fascinating is not just their innocence, but their commonalities. You see the same thing all over the world in children. They love to play, they love to laugh, they love to learn. In so many ways that they play, they play the same. And uh, I think the, the title of this book actually came from one of our trips when we were in a country that we knew nothing about the language other than yes, no, thank you. Um, and we saw a young child outside playing. And she jumped up and just started laughing. She was playing hide and seek, hiding from her mother. And uh, jumped up and started laughing so much. And we said, we understand that one. So that's where the title came from, They Laugh in My Language. And when we start to realize the, the commonalities that we have, then I think that maybe that would, could begin a basis of communication. You see children play and they don't have to know the same language. They just play. And so um, I think it's, a very important thing for us to realize that around the world that the children are the same and what you find out actually is that people are the same not just the children when you get away from politics or um, anyone in power you just get around normal everyday people they're all the same. They're providing for their families. They're concerned about the future of their children. So uh, you just find out that we really have so much in common that it's real easy to identify with them. And it becomes easier to communicate with them whether you know the language or not. So you can become friends not even knowing the language. You can enjoy each other. You can appreciate each other. Um. After the completion of uh, They Laugh in My Language, thinking along the lines of children still. And all children, in fact, most people, but all children especially, love animals. And coming from an educator's background, you like to take anything and teach whatever you can. Use what's in your hand to teach. And uh, I had a, a lot of pictures of animals from all over the world. And I decided to make it into a book to teach children the alphabet. And there's no better way to teach them than through poetry because they can remember things like that. They, they learn a little bit about the animals as they're learning the American alphabet. And then at the end of the book, I decided to put something that even adults might enjoy what we call in South Louisiana, Lanya, a little something extra. So I put a little something extra in there for the adults to tell you a little bit more about each of the animals. So it kind of keep you hooked into it, as well as something for your children. And uh, I've already heard that many children really do like this, not just the sing-songy effect of the poetry, but they're learning something about the animals and they enjoy learning something about them. So 
This was just a fun book to do. Our travels didn't begin with the seventh continent. In fact, it didn't even begin with the thought of going to the seventh continent. Our travels began with one country. But then after we realized that we had gone to six of, six of the continents already, then we said, we need to go to the seventh continent just because it's there and it's one that we've never been to. So uh, instead of just making it a trip where you just fly to the nearest ship that's the nearest to Antarctica, instead we made it into a journey. And we started in Peru. We said, well, let's go to the heights of Machu Picchu before we go down to the lowest part of the earth. So uh, it was, a uh, pretty exciting, both parts of it, and the entire trip was. But the thing that you see when you go to Antarctica, you look out there and you see that nothing is man-made. Everything is totally creation. And uh, you look at it just in total amazement. I've been amazed throughout the world at, at various cities and buildings and artwork and so many things. But when you looked at Antarctica, when we woke up and saw the sun rising over this continent, it would just take your breath thinking of the purity of such a place. And um, to have the, the excitement of being in a Zodiac and stepping out into the ocean and then on to the, the seventh continent, uh, it was beyond a thrill to us. In fact, we took, we took a football jersey with us with the number seven on it so that we could hold it up and show that we had been to the seventh continent. We had been to all seven now. and. Uh, it became more than just a quest to go to seven because it was the thrill of something that was totally different. And you come away from it just thinking, you always want to quote this, what a wonderful world. That's what you get out of the whole trip. What a wonderful world. Just the way that it's created. You're greeted by tuxedo penguins they're coming out to tell you hello, and they're so glad when you leave. But uh, all in all, it's a fabulous trip, and it's well worth every moment that you spend. Uh, I could recommend it to anyone who has a sense of adventure, and or if you just want to complete number seven. is a very brief synopsis of travels around the world. And uh, you can see throughout all of this that it's possible to see the world. And the main thing that I would want to show through all of this is to challenge each person not to limit themselves. Don't limit yourself to one place, one space, because then you get um, 
one point of view. But the more that you go out into the world, the more that you see of the world, the more that you enjoy of the world, you see the things that have been built, the things that have been created, the natural resources everywhere, the natural beauty of uh, the mountains, the valleys, the, the animals, uh, the snow, the desert, whether you're in the Alps or you're on the Sahara, you see the beauty in all of these places. And uh, I would think that for you, a person to get a real view of the world, they have to go beyond where they are to actually see what it is. Um, I'm reminded of the, the story at the end of the book about the men who were, the blind men who were feeling an elephant for the first time trying to decide what the animal was actually like and they were all at a different part of the elephant and one of them thought that the whole elephant was like the trunk. One thought it was like the ears, one thought it was like the tail, one thought it was like the, the hefty legs. Um, so if you don't get a broader picture of the whole, you're limited to just uh, come into a conclusion just on one aspect. And the same thing happens in the world. If we limit ourselves to one city, one state, one country, then we've limited the world. We've limited ourselves to really understanding anything about the world. Uh, if the only information we get is from the media, you're missing it. The beauty of the world is the world. It's not what you see or hear through the media. And it, it's not even what you get a glimpse of through this book. But hopefully, sometimes getting a glimpse of something causes a person to get a hunger for it. You get a glimpse, sometimes you get a glimpse of a plate of food and say, ooh, that's what I would like to have. And so when you get a glimpse of some of these places, uh, you might say, ooh, that's where I would like to go, or that's something I would like to do, or I never thought of doing something like that before. Maybe I will. So uh, don't limit yourselves. Just go beyond what you think you can. Uh, we started in one country. Of course, it was kind of strange that after we had been to several places in our own country, that the first one out of our country would be Kenya. I don't know why we chose Kenya to begin with. It just sounded wonderful. And uh, that was the beginning, not only of a, a safari in Kenya, but it was the beginning of our safari of the world. So we had a wonderful time. And, and it was so much like a storybook.